Hi there! So today I'll be talking about APA qualitative reporting standards. We know that students and researchers must stick to APA guidelines to be successful in school assignments and to be published in academic research. But unfortunately, while most research methods classes will teach students APA basics, instructors must pay more attention to reporting standards and qualitative research. Therefore, this video overview is the essential of formatting an APA paper for qualitative research. Special attention is given to the methods and results section, since this is where qualitative and quantitative reporting standards differ the most. We're going to start off with the title. Try to identify the main topic under investigation for your titles. Titles should be simple and engaging for the reader. For example, in qualitative research, authors often use direct quotes from the data to create an engaging title. In this study, Swirsky and Angelone use an engaging title with labels that people give feminist women, like feminazi and bra-burning crazies, to explore why women may not want to identify with contemporary feminist movements. Next, we have an abstract. Abstracts in qualitative research are not too different from those you will find in a quantitative paper. Abstracts are a summary of your research. They help the reader decide whether they will read the entire paper. Before doing your abstract, consult the journal's guidelines to see if submitters must include any precise information. As a good rule of thumb, whenever you want to publish in a journal, it might be beneficial to check out the five last publications to see what is generally expected to get published in that journal. Here's an example of an abstract in a qualitative paper. So, according to APA's Journal Reporting Standards, or JARS, this is what should be in your abstract. First, you want to state the problem slash question slash objectives under investigation. In this abstract, the researchers state the problem, which is the negative emotional impact that the strong black woman stereotype has on African Caribbean women in the UK. Next, you want to indicate the study design, including types of participants or data sources, and analytic strategy. Here we see the data come from five focus groups with 18 women, and the keywords at the bottom indicate that the researchers use thematic analysis. You must also state your main results slash findings and main implications slash significance. The main results here state that the concept of being strong negatively affected these women's well-being and coping mechanisms. And the findings point to important implications in understanding emotional distress in UK African Caribbean women. Lastly, identify five keywords. And those are usually listed here at the bottom of the abstract. Next, we're going to see the introduction. The introduction section of a qualitative study has the same standards as a quantitative study. The same rigor applies. We don't get to cut cur corners, sadly, but here you will introduce the topic under investigation in more detail. Review and synthesize existing literature related to your research question. Your literature review should include key issues, theoretical frameworks, contextualization of the research question, identify gaps in the literature, and state the goal of the study. Here's a pro tip. You don't need a hypothesis for qualitative studies, but as usually in, in psychology, it really depends. So most studies state research questions and the aim of the study. In this paper that looked into medical students' perceptions of play and learning, the authors state their research question at the end of the literature review. They wanted to explore students' perceptions of what, what constitutes play-learning interaction. Although, like I said, hypotheses are not that common in qualitative research, they can appear in studies that use content analysis as their data analytics strategy. So here in a study called A Content of Analysis of 32 Years of Shark Week Documentaries, the authors had seven hypotheses, which you can see listed here. An example of one of them is, titles of Shark Week episodes use negative language evoking fear, and the use of negative language has increased over time. Hypotheses are more common in content analysis because they run counts. Now, we will be looking at the methods section. In this section, the author describes in detail the steps they took to collect and analyze their data. Some things to consider are data collection strategy. Was it convenient sampling? What data analytics strategies did you use? For example, did you use thematic analysis or content analysis? And approaches to in inquiry. For instance, did you use a feminist perspective? The methods section should cover a description of the participants. So in many qualitative studies, we see a more detailed explanation of participants. For example, in this study about gay and bisexual men's perceptions of the donation and use of human biological samples for research, the researchers interviewed 46 gay and bisexual men, and they gave this detailed table to participants. 
Here we see the participants' demographic information, like the, their pseudo pseudonyms, their age, their recruitment location, and details about their participation in the study. Next, we have reflexivity statements. They're not required for thematic analysis, and you see them more in ethnographic research. However, some authors choose to give a positionality statement. Here's an example of one from a study that was a systematic qualitative review of what matters to women during childbirth. Here, the authors consider their views and opinions on intrapartum care as possible influences on the decisions made in the design and conduct of the study. Other things to report in your method are recruitment strategies, data collection, and your analytic strategy. Next, I'm going to talk to you about the results sections. Reporting findings in qualitative research is different from quantitative analysis. Authors report research finding, for example, themes, and explain what those mean. These findings are presented in a paragraph format with context and direct quotes from the data to support conclusions. It might be help or helpful here to include some illustrations, for example, a word cloud. In content analysis and applied thematic analysis, you can expect to see a coefficient for integrated reliability. For example, in this thematic analysis about near-death experiences, the researchers calculated Cohen's kappa coefficient, which can range from negative 1 to plus 1. In here, the two coders obtain a Cohen's kappa coefficient of 0.46, which is consider considered a moderate agreement. Next, I'm going to present you with different visuals you can expect to see in a qualitative paper. In a content analysis, you might see some cool table or graphs like this one about the number and percentages of occurrences of particular research methods in Shark Week. In thematic analysis, you might see a process model, like the one which explains the process for making decisions towards the end-of-life care about someone with dementia. Or you may see a thematic map, like this one, in the study of adolescents' perceptions of bullying, which shows the two major themes that emerge from the data, influences on power imbalance and protects against power imbalance. Then you have the sub-themes listed here, like age and group membership. This is a neat way to have your reader visualize your themes all together. Additionally, you might also see a results table with themes and example quotes from each team. Theme. Tables are a good way to put large pieces of, of information for the reader to easily absorb. These graphs and tables are really neat and useful, but you're more likely going to see them in open, open source journals that have more space. However, they also make an appearance in conventional journals. Our last point is the discussion. It's pretty similar to quantitative study. You are expected to explain how your findings add to the existing body of literature. Some things to consider are, do your conclusions challenge, contribute, or support, support previous results? Consider alternative explanations for your findings. Point out to the strengths and the limitation of the study. Transfer, transferability. This is unique to qualitative research. What should readers be mindful of when using these findings in other contexts or populations? And lastly, you have to discuss future research avenues. All right, and this is all I have to share with you today. I hope you enjoyed, and good luck writing your papers.